When the topic of San Francisco comes up, typically the responses are of the following. Yes, a lot of negativity. We don't travel to San Francisco to do the touristy things. We travel there for our music events. We try and stay at different hotels within the city, and in doing so, we like to report back how the stay was with videos here on our channel, Sippy Cup Adventures of Northern California. What we have learned is that, yes, there are hotel stays in the city where you can steer clear of these scenes seen here and where you can feel much more at ease. And this day is one of those hotels. We love to stay because, like I said, the room is airy and you get this, this sweeping view. I mean, oh, oh, I'm chasing <laughs> So I'm going to ask you, a tapas bar? Tapas. What's that mean? Small bites. So no full dinner? Nope. Small bites. Appetizers, things like that. Really good tapas. My YouTube video, by the way, you guys. Are... Oh, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> how not to use the elevator? <laughs> Let's see how well, that was fun trying to figure. It took us five minutes to figure out the elevator. And four of us. You hold the hold the key. You hold the key here. Oh, we're still on thirteen. On up. Oh. What do I have to hit, 14? The hotel we're speaking of is the Luma Hotel in the Mission Bay District of San Francisco. In June of 2022, the Luma Hotel opened, making it the first hotel within the Mission Bay neighborhood, most likely the first of a few more to make its entry into this growing neighborhood. Check out the room. Oh, wow. Oh, that's right, we got our room. Wait, did we get a double queen? Oh, we did. Yeah, many of the rooms at the Luma Hotel do include these floor to ceiling windows, which provide some outstanding views. Yeah. So you said to get a corner room, we had to get double kings. Double kings. Dial zero from the, the hotel phone and, and he, he, he brings it. Mo rotates up to the. He motates up. Rotates, rotates up. up. Oh. Rolls up. Locked on target. Okay, so as you see here, I ran into Henry. And Henry was on his way to the sixth floor. So, if you see right here, when I took my phone out to film Henry coming in, I was too late and I dropped $40 cash on the elevator. So then I went around the corner, 
to buy uh, some muffins and coffee. And of course it's not, no, they don't take cash. So I charge it to the room, but I was like, where's my $40? So I went back in the elevator and come back down. Henry was gone and my $40 was on, on the cash, but. On the ground. On the ground. So Henry, yeah, he doesn't, we, we called the dial zero to see if Henry can bring us coffees. Henry doesn't bring coffees or pizzas, apparently. But brings everything else. I guess if you, does he bring drugs, weapons? No. You know, I don't know, but food delivery, yes. So we didn't get to utilize Henry. The Cavagna Rooftop Bar is located on the 17th floor and as previously mentioned, it's a tapas bar of Central and South American cuisine with small bites and they are delicious. You have to make a reservation even if you're staying at the Luma. Yeah, so as you're in and you turn from 3rd to Channel Street, it's kind of tough to see the entrance, but it's a small entryway. And the entry to the Carvana Rooftop Hotel is right here. Now it's not open now, it doesn't open until four, but you'll see a line and there'll be staff here. So this is the elevator that you take up to Carvana. Even if you're staying here, you gotta come downstairs and come out here. Yeah, getting back down is a whole nother adventure. The entire time we were at the Luna, we never figured out and often ended up back on the first floor. We just had to get out, switch elevators, and just take an elevator back up to the 14th floor. And as we mentioned previously, staying at the Luma is in the Mission Bay District, which is relatively safe. You're not going to see a lot of unhoused people on the streets in the area. Now in green, here is the Mission Bay District along the waterfront. Quite a few restaurants. And these are just a few restaurants. You got the Ramp, which is an outdoor like playground and food fun place. You got the Mission Rock Resort. You have Miller and Lux, an upscale joint right next to the Chase Center. You've got the Spark Social. Again, outdoors, food trucks, picnic tables, games. Then you have the Outwater Tavern, which is right on the water. And then just right behind the Luma is the New Belgium Brewing, Tap Room, and Restaurant. And there will be more hotels in this burgeoning area. Homelessness is a widespread issue in San Francisco, hence this video, that affects many neighborhoods beyond the Tenderloin District. The Tenderloin District is seen here in the pink. While the Tenderloin has historically been one of the city's neighborhoods with the highest concentration of homeless residents, the problem has spread to other areas in recent years. Along with the Tenderloin, the Mission District has a high concentration of homeless as well. The Mission District is seen here in blue. We do not have any desire to stay in the Mission District, although it's a vibrant and lively area. There are mostly budget hotels and boutique inns, and we prefer to stay in the Skyline Hotels where we can see the cityscape and the hotels in the Mission District does not provide that. In our stays in the city, what we have found is that the stays in downtown, like these stays at the Hilton Union Square, the Park 55, and the Line Hotel, you will have some homeless issues. These hotels are on the fringe of the Tenderloin District but just east a bit of the Tenderloin, these hotels, the Hyatt Regency and the Marriott Marquis, you are on the fringe of the financial district. Our recent stay at the Clancy Hotel on 2nd and Folsom Streets was really void of any homelessness as this stay is even closer to the financial district. Because the financial district is primarily a commercial area with many office buildings, banks, and other businesses, 
it may be less attractive to the homeless as a place to settle or spend time during the day. The exception is public areas like parks and plazas where the homeless tend to congregate, even in the financial district, except maybe Salesforce Park. We have yet to visit the Salesforce Elevated Park, but our research suggests that the homeless are kept away from this huge park. Structure. Salesforce Park is safe and secure. The homeless are not excluded, but the focus is on behavior. Private security ambassadors and local police have a heavy presence. The park has daytime operating hours because the park is on the roof and access has to be through the gondola, elevators, escalators, or stairs. Access can be restricted at night. The park's rules and regulations do not allow behavior that's often associated with homeless people. So you may ask, why not stay in other hotels where there's not as much homelessness? Well, first of all, we don't feel threatened by the homeless. And if we walk in the area, we're vigilant. Would we walk these streets in the late evening? No. Secondly, all of our music venues are closer to these days in the downtown or Soma districts. Staying in the Mission Bay area, like what this video is also about, Hotel Luma, or at the Hotel Villa, we have felt very safe. It's primarily a residential and commercial area, home to several major medical and research institutions. Because of the rapid development and the new housing and public amenities being built, the area is less attractive for the homeless. Now we will never stay on the Embarcadero by Fisherman's Wharf. It's really touristy and there tends to be more car break-ins in touristy locations. It also would be a long and more costly Uber ride from the Fisherman's Wharf area to our music venues in downtown. So that's why we will never stay at the Embarcadero. Now, staying at the Luma is perfect for those who want to go catch a Giants game at nearby Oak Park. You see the park right here. There's also a Hyatt and a Hotel Via that's close. Of course, it could be more expensive when the Giants are in town. Or if you're a Warriors fan, staying at the Lumas, very close, within walking distance to the Chase Center, home of the Golden State Warriors. There's no coffee pot in the room. Anyone wants coffee? Who wants coffee? I just made a fresh pot of coffee. Does anybody want coffee? Who wants coffee? Does anybody want I don't know how I missed it, but it's kind of, for me, it's kind of like a general amenity. You always have a coffee maker, whether it's a Keurig, a Mr. Coffee type, or the new Nespresso's. You always have a coffee, a cup of coffee in your room in the morning. Yeah, and you, another thing that's disappointing is you can't get breakfast here. Again, they only have the, the breakfast nook for muffins and stuff. Also, from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. every morning, there's a free continental breakfast. Ooh. Continental breakfast? Yes, from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. But you know, you get up in the morning, you'd like to get breakfast delivered, or at least have a place to eat breakfast. A garçon. Uh -huh. A uh, one uh, admission for the continental breakfast. You can just help yourself, sir. Oh, interesting. European style. And doing a Google search, there's really no breakfast places within walking distances area. So it's kind of a big negative that there's no way to get breakfast in this area. In, in Rome. The forbidden fruit. There is a market down at the corner. I guess you can get some breakfast items in there. I love to have a Bloody Mary in the morning. And the bar doesn't open until four. So there really wasn't a way to get a Bloody Mary. So if you're expecting to be able to have drinks prior to 4 p.m., not gonna happen here. Yeah, 
Now in driving to the Luma Hotel, you'll see right here next to Oracle Park, you'll be on 3rd Street and you're gonna cross over the 3rd Street Bridge, that structure there. And when coming up on 3rd Street, look out worker, you're going to see the hotel to the right, but you're, uh, where you're supposed to go. You don't see any valet or anything. Really wasn't on the website. So you're going to make a right here on Channel Street and immediately make a right into the entrance. It just kind of happens upon you. Oh, more construction workers. Oh, hey, there it is. Then park inside, check in, and of course, as we always recommend, get valet. So how much was our stay? Well, our rooms cost us an average of $330 a night. That's what we went in knowing. Plus, of course, you got the valet, which is $75 a night, plus the $10 valet overnight tax, so $85 a night. We expect that. You have to get valet. For a total of $981, this was in mid-March of 2023. Now, despite not being able to get coffee in our own room or grab breakfast anywhere, we will be back to the Luma. We really enjoyed it. Like the open airiness of the room, the staff was great, the location was great. There was no unhoused neighbors or homeless, as some may call, on the streets. We felt very safe. We appreciate you watching Sippy Cup Adventures of Northern California, and we'll see you next time.